Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I am Rex. I am Daniel. And this is Sheep Dip. Sheep Dip. We're gonna dip some sheep. This sounds like a name that should have been invented by a southerner instead of in Scotch whiskey. It, do, it does beg to be uh, pronounced with an act. Sheep Dip. Sheep Dip. You got some sheep Dip. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I love that dip. <laughs> All right, let's try it. Yeah. By a request from Raymond Moda, M-O-T-A. Is he a uh, channel guy? He said, well, okay, what's your, he said, I'm gonna do a Rex. This is mine. You're doing it wrong. No, this is what you do. You're doing it wrong. I'll show you. No, no. no I really need to show you. No. This is critical to the oh. process. Buff to a nice shoe. <laughs> like it's kind of greasy now. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> make it weird. Great job as that usual, wasn't guys. That was what I did. You made it weird. <laughs> I totally did. <laughs> Great job, guys. Just wondering if you have sheep dip. Yeah. Hey, we do. Uh, saw it in a grocery store. Mm. Marked down for six dollars. Buy all the sheep dip. Holy. <laughs> buy everything they own. I thought I can't pass it up. I've never had a scotch before, so I have no idea what I'm in for. Can't wait to try it. Yeah. But this was a while ago, so so just so you know, yeah. every time someone says, you should try this, I collect it, mm -hmm. and I put it on a Word doc, because I'm a nerd, mm -hmm. and then I, we, I've we i been working my way through, historically, we're only going by request. You remember what happened last time? Yeah, heard. because of that, give me that bottle. Because of that, I have seven pages of requested whiskeys for us to drink right now. Yeah. So if you request one today, it could be a month before you see it show up in a video. Unless you send one, then it gets to the front if of the line. If you send one, we bump you to the front. Okay. Now this. Now what I'm gonna say to Raymond is, here, here's the thing. You scored. You. you... Now even when it's not six dollars, <laughs> this is one of the uh, least expensive whiskeys that is also pretty damn good. Yeah, we, when we tell you about this, you'll be shocked at how cheap this is. Now, guess who is responsible for making this? This is a vatted malt, which means it's a, bl a mix of only malt whiskeys, a blend yeah. of only malt whiskeys. Yeah. Um, no grain whiskey added into it. You know who did this? Richard Patterson. Oh, the guy. Who's in charge of Dalmore. Yeah. And the blender for White and McKay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he did this for Spencerfield Spirits. Right. So for, These are all whiskeys. So for people who aren't in the whiskey scene. He's a badass. So. <laughs> Responsible for some of our favorite scotches. Fine. Okay. Richard Pat Badass. Richard, That's all you need to know. Richard Patterson. He just he exists in the state of badassery. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> I'd have his babies. I thought you did. Or at least tried a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is, I'm having a hard time carrying on. This is 16 different malts are up to. Oh, man. And um, the range, the age range. Right. Eight to twelve years old. I, this is not cheap whiskey. I, Eight to twelve year old whiskey. I categorize this as a whiskey that is friendly but not boring. Friendly but not boring. Not on the most, you know, effortless drinking it like water into the spectrum of friendly. I don't think but, there's any smoke in this. But moving towards some complexity. There's some flavors bouncing around in here. Nah, that's true. There are some. There are some. Isle, there are some islas in this. I think. There's a couple in. But I'm having a hard time finding them behind all the prettiness. Mm. Yeah, fruit, pear, tiniest bit of... Oh, okay, so if you chew around floral. on it, it comes out a little bit better. Floral, you know why, because they brought it down to 40%. Floral, fruit, pear, floral. a little bit of walnut. I totally there. get pear. A little bit of walnut. Melon flavors, mm. a little bit of oak. Yeah. There's a little bit of bitterness, like wood flavors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is nice. Um, if you see this... It's most a little pepper at the end. Most likely, most likely not going to be very expensive, and it's just a good standby. If uh, you want something... You want to know where the name comes from? For the, the filthy mooches that drop by, you don't want to give them the good stuff. You want to know where Sheep Dip comes from? I don't know if I do. Sheep Dip used to be like a delousing agent they would use on sheep. I was right. Didn't they really need to know that. Right. No, but here's what happened. This is an English term, actually, not a Scottish term. In uh, uh, the sheep country in England, to hide their moonshine, illegal moonshine, yeah. they would put it in containers marked... SD sheep, sheep dip, dip. <laughs> sheep delousing, and uh, to hide it from the uh, excise officers. Did they ever get them mixed up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very possible. 
Oh. Depends on how much of the sheep dip you had had beforehand. I just remembered a story that has nothing to do with whiskey, but it's bring it on. Well, okay. So back in the days, um, I think it's the early 1900s, watermelon. Okay, this was on Mind of a Chef on Netflix. Oh, okay. The story about watermelon, and there weren't a lot of different variations of watermelon, and they're kind of weird sizes and shapes. And there's this one kind of watermelon that was crossbred and to be this big and sweet and amazing from this one farmer, and he wouldn't let the seeds get out anywhere. And so thieves would actually come in the middle of the night and steal watermelons. So what they did was they started poisoning some watermelons so that we'd end up killing people if they tried to steal these amazing watermelons. Holy crap! The problem is, <laughs> occasionally they would forget which ones they poisoned. <laughs> and so every once in a while, in like the newspaper, you'd be reading about this entire dinner party, this family just getting killed, oh, wiped holy out. Holy crap! Because <laughs> they wanted a nice, refreshing summer treat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoops. Poison the watermelon. Whoops. Mm. I like sheep dip, man. And I think I had this as recently as last week, actually. Um, out of your office. That's right, because I have another bottle in my office. Mm -hmm. All right, comment me. I want some $6 sheep dip. Dude, for six bucks? <laughs> my God. Let's back up a truck. Yes. James Judy, question, do they ever mix staves from different barrels when they age scotch. Specifically, blended whiskey, what the hell's a stave? A stave is uh, one of the pieces of a barrel. So like, look down here, you've got strips of wood. Oh, yeah. One of those is a stave. It's a stave. Okay. So, um, you would have to take apart a barrel. In they, they're always taken apart. Actually, as a matter of fact, uh, most large productions, yeah. they don't, when bourbon, a bourbon company like Jim Beam uses a barrel, mm -hmm. and then say a uh, scotch company says, we want that barrel. They don't send them a barrel. They take it apart. Oh. They stack all of the staves. Interesting. And then they send it to Scotland. That makes and sense. And Scotland reassembles barrels. That makes sense, because if you just ship this, it would have a ton of dead space. Yes. It takes up a lot of room in shipping. Yes. Interesting. And they have their own cooperages in Scotland who are rebuilding the, the bourbon barrels. So a cooperage. And wine barrels, and a cooperage is a barrel maker. Okay. And uh, so they, they rebuild barrel. barrels yeah. from old staves. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Yes, I have heard of, not, oh, by the way, okay, so. Let me first answer the question as asked. Right. No, I've never heard of the Scotch whiskey mixing staves. I have heard of American whiskeys who are mixing different kinds of wood either into the fake aging or in barrel staves. Um, and I can't remember right offhand who it was. Hmm. But I have heard of people trying this. Um, and then the next closest thing was last a couple or last week we did Corsair, yeah. where they smoked from three different woods, and that was kind of cool. Remember cherry? Birch Beach and Pete. Oh, the beach, fiasco. the beach, the beach fiasco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Fyodor one two nine. I think he's talking about the Mooch video. My life has changed, Rex. Yeah. There's now twelve minutes and eighteen seconds less of it for me to do other stuff with. It was worth it. Yeah, totally worth it. When are you guys going to review the cheapest bottom of the barrel shelf crap you can find? Okay, here's the well, thing. Here's I'm going to have a hard time doing a video about that. Here's at, at $6, this isn't crap, but you're not going to get anything much yeah. cheaper than that. We didn't pay $6. No, for we it. didn't. Yeah, find, find Raymond. <laughs> Raymond's got the inside track. And tell him to share his $6 sheep dip with you. <laughs> Uh, um, are you talking about like uh, Fireball and stuff like no, that? No, no, no. He's talking about just like Jack Daniels or. The most budget, you know what we have? We have like Heaven Hill. These are things that come in plastic containers as easily as they come in glass containers. Never even seen that bottle. Old style bourbon. You know what? I'm not going to do a real review on it, but I'll drink a little bit right now. Nice plastic cap, bro. Yeah. Pop that. All right. Heaven Hill. Old style bourbon. <laughs> Notice that they wrote it in the old style lettering just to make sure that you would realize it's old. But it didn't, it didn't say ye oldie. No. <laughs> That's how you really ye know. Ye old with an E on the end. That's yeah. how you really know. Yeah. Now this could be good. We might be shitting all over a bourbon that's actually yeah, tested. No, don't be a snob. Now remember, Heaven Hill is responsible for a lot of the stuff we love. I'm not offended, I'm not offended by the smell here, man. Wow, shit, that's just friendly. I'm gonna have a hard time saying anything bad about that. Yeah. It's definitely one note. Sorry. It is one note, but it is not a bad note. It's not a bad note. It's Look, not a bad note. Um, it's like when your kid's learning to play the recorder. Yeah. And they, they're learning hot cross buns. Da, na, 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 na. <laughs> and then they hit, and they're always going, ba, na, na, ba, na. and then one time they go, ba. And you're like, hey, that's pretty good. 
<laughs> That's a pretty good one note. I never listen to my children. The bioethicist. <laughs> so you implied something interesting. I'm assuming this is me. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> Distilling seems like you need to go balls to the wall and not yeah. and not a recreational thing at all. Yeah, because it's illegal in the US. What about aging whiskeys in your own small barrel? Oh yeah, do it. Do you buy off the shelf? Yes. Do you stick to cheap or young whiskeys? Are there risks? No, no risks. No wrong way. Uh, actually, Pick any damn whiskey. Actually, there's like, you can buy small barrel kits yeah. from where? Yeah, you can buy uh, charred barrels in the five liter size, which is perfect. I mean, that five liters means you end up with about seven bottles you'll need to buy to fill it. And, uh, and by the way, uh, you, you, all have to, you all have to Google these on YouTube, but you cure a barrel when you get those mm -hmm. by boiling a ton of, you know, five liters of water yeah. and filling up a barrel with boiling water and letting it keep adding boiling water until it stops leaking. It can take 24 oh, hours. To swell the wood. Yeah. And right. then you drain it all and then you just fill it with whatever you want to put in it. There is no wrong way. As a matter of fact, bioethicist, Here's my recommendation. Yeah. You should buy five or six bottles of things you love mm -hmm. and try to vat a blend. Because vatting just means pouring into a container that you use to marry the blends together, right? Not, not wood, though. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, apparently. Can a vat be wood? Yeah, it can okay. be, yeah. Okay. So, um, so do your little proportions with a glass like this and a little measure mm -hmm. and say, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put in this barrel one bottle of this, two bottles of this. A half bottle of this, one mm. bottle of this, and a dash of this. Yeah. I'm going to let it sit and I'm going to taste it once a week or one, twice a week until it's like, oh, Five yeah. times a week. Five million times a week. <laughs> and, dude, you can create some amazing stuff. And then just, like, soak the labels off those bottles, drain it back into the bottles, and you've got a personal blended whiskey that you crafted exactly according to your flavor profile. So much fun. I'll win awards uh, and uh, become uh, rich and famous. Yeah. Sell it. <laughs> become the, without, rich and famous. Without any legal ramifications. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we maxed out. We're drinking Heaven Hill now. <laughs> yeah. We went from $6 sheep dip to Heaven Hill. and We went from $6 to... I think yeah. Heaven Hill is even more than $6. It is more than $6. But this is better. Yeah, it, it is. is. All right. Till tomorrow, I'm in a crazy state this side of legal. Okay, you return before we have time to miss you. Cheers. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.